Okay, laparoscopic fundoplication. Today we are going to discuss. So, we will see that indication, port, operative procedure, and complication. Nissen has started doing fundoplication basically for hiatus hernia. He never thought that it is going to be so popular for the GERT. But now the maximum number of the people they go for the hiatus hernia for the GERT. GERD gastroesophageal reflux disease is defined as a failure of the anti reflux barrier which allows the mucosa of the lower esophagus to be exposed with the acid and enzyme and repeated exposure can create the inflammation, it can create the stricture, it can create the pain severe and these are the symptoms. We say that it is a collar around the hanger fundoplication just like how we put a collar around our neck or around the hanger, same way we have to take a wrap. So, what it happens that it will give the pressure over the lower esophageal sphincter and reflux can be minimized. Epidermology is that in US there was one survey performed in 1997 and according to that 44 percent of the population of the United States of America they describe the symptom of GERD, but only 10 to 14 percent of the population they have symptom characteristic to the GERD. Other they have just hyper acidity, lifestyle problems, problem of the excessive smoking and alcohol. 10 to 50 percent of the patients who has the GERD they need the long term treatment. Now, Symptoms are heartburn and regurgitation, these are the first symptom. If only heartburn and regurgitation is there, then better is to go for medical therapy. But if you started giving the retro external severe pain and respiratory symptom, because at night when the patient was sleeping, it got regurgitated and he is doing the repeatedly respiration pneumonia. In those situations, surgery is warranted. It is important that you should do the thorough investigations. Endoscopy is the first line investigation followed by the barium shallow. If these two investigations has proved that it is a GERD case, after that you will do the esophageal transit plus minus manometry and pH monitoring. Esophageal transit, pH monitoring, dual probe, ambulatory 20 or 4 hour pH monitoring is required. In those situation if it is esophageal, what is the lower esophageal pressure? Uh, 6 to 12. Uh, pressure it is up to 25 also 25. yes and uh, if it is uh, suppose less then you have the surgery essential and what is the average pH of the lower esophageal sphincter? Yes, it is it varies if it is become acidic like suppose 3, 4 that means reflux is there and that also it has a diurnal variation. So, we should not check it at one time we should do the complete 24 hour monitoring and if the mean pH is acidic then we have to do the surgery, but if these two are not going towards the GERD then surgery is not required. There is one also one important classification that is called as Los Angeles classification of the this uh, GERD that is also very practical and according to the Los Angeles classification GERD is classified in four important uh, grade and those grade has to be respected and you have to perform the surgery according to those grading system so that you will not do the wrong case also. If you will do endoscopy then Los Angeles grade 1 is that it has the mucosa which has 1 or 2 break, but less than 5 millimeter in the diameter and it does not reach to the top of the mucosal fold. So, this is the endoscopic view and we can see here that this is the inflammation and the breach into the continuity of the mucosa, but each is less than 5 millimeter and uh, it is not going up the top of the mucosal fold. So, 
so this is grade 1 in grade a in which you can do the medical treatment only it is not necessary to do for the any operative management is not may not require here you can see again this is the lower esophageal sphincter which is opening now grade b is one or more mucosal break more than 5 millimeter long but this also doesn't extend between the top of the two mucosal fold so this is uh, more common in the patient who are smokers or um, chronic alcoholic here you can see this is the mucosal break but more than 5 millimeter and it is going on the fold but not more than 2 mucosal folds so this is uh, one classification other is grade c this is grade b this is grade c in this what happens less than 75 percent of the circumference of the esophagus is involved and one or two mucosal fold which is continuous in between the top of two or more mucosal fold. So, it is very long going up to the top of the two or more mucosal fold, but if you will see the circumference of the esophagus 75 percent of the esophagus is healthy only this is this is healthy esophagus this is healthy esophagus. So, this is grade C and is grade D more than 75 percent of the esophagus is involved only 25 or less than 25 is healthy. So, in those situation it is a very bad situation and this is the worst Los Angeles classification of the esophageal erosion or the inflammation due to the GERD. So, in this case this is grade D and you can see these all are ulceration only these areas are healthy. So, this way <coughs> endoscopy nowadays become the first line method of diagnosis of the GERD that is very important and that you have to keep in mind. So, this is the way how you will decide after that barium shallow main purpose of barium shallow is to rule out any of the other mediational diseases pigtail deformity and other problem of the esophagus. If you are thinking about the surgery then pH monitoring and the esophageal manometry. Esophageal manometry also tell you that which type of surgery is good like you are planning for Nissen fundoplication, you are planning for thal, you are planning for tupe, you are planning for dar, you are planning for Lynx procedure or you are planning for TIF that is the is transoral incisionless fundoplication. After that first management is medical management and 90 percent of the cases esophagitis heal in the medical management. However, the symptom reoccurs in more than 80 percent of the cases after 6 months to 1 year of the drug withdrawal. So, it is not going to be permanently cured by the drug. So, question is who are the surgical candidate? who are the surgical candidate to whom the indication of surgery is there. First indication of surgery is refractory to medical management. So, what is the meaning of refractory to medical management? That is why I ask because I was expecting this answer. You know refractory does not refractory and resistance is the two things. Refractory means yes. No, no that is you are correct long term treatment is one of the indication, but refractory means as soon as he stop the medical treatment the symptoms immediately reoccur that is a missing of refractory. So, patient who are refractory they are good candidate patient who has long term treatment they cannot intolerant to pph they cannot tolerate that much they are good candidate associated with heart as hernia is a good candidate but who is resistant to medical treatment they want respond to the surgical treatment patient comes to you and they say that they don't respond they say that i am i have tried all the medicines and nothing works then surgery also doesn't work 
and in those patients the post operatively their condition may be worse. So, the patient who are not a good uh, responder of the medical management of the GERD, they are not a good responder of the surgery anyway. So, we should avoid those patients to perform fundoplication. Sometimes they see they have a psychosomatic problems, they have neurogenic problems, they have reverse peristalsis of the oesophagus, they have some non specific angina due to that they have pain non specific no cardiac problem also. And those patients after fundoplication they are very you know anxious very much you can say obsessive disease, they are suffering basically from OCDs and these type of problems. So, in those patients fundoplication can make their condition worse. So, it is important, but patient who say that when I take medicine I am fine that means, they will really get benefit. This is the anatomy here is the oesophagus, this is the right crust, this is the left crust, crust is singular, crura is plural, crura means both, crust means one, this is vena cava, this is the liver caudate lobe will be there, which will cover the vena cava, this is the oesophagus, here this is the aorta and uh, diaphragm a spleen will be here. Anterior vagus is embedded, posterior vagus is not embedded. In initial fundoplication you are using a 360 degree wrap that is my collar this is Nissen and your collar is tope. If I will open this button anteriorly one third is open then it is tope. Now, initially the problem is suppose I am wearing this tight color and it is tight I cannot speak I will start feeling strangulated exactly same way initial fundoplication in the past there was a lot of dysphagia, but now it is a floppy initial where you are making a very floppy initial if I have this I will put this very loose then I do not have any problem. Tupe was once upon a time popular because people they started doing tupe thinking that it is not going to do dysphagia, but success rate of tupe was not very good and that is why still the nissen is recommended all over the world and still the gold standard of fundoplication is nissen fundoplication, but floppy nissen has to be performed. You have to take a wrap and then you will take complete 360 wrap and you will tie a knot. This is B del Magni, B del Magni has given this chart and according to him any patient who come with the symptomatic GERD first you should do endoscopy then barium shallow then oesophageal manometry and then pH monitoring. These are the series of the investigation how you will perform. After that if it is a hypotonic or normotonic lower oesophageal sphincter, normal oesophageal length, normal oesophageal motility then you do nissen fundoplication. But if you see the poor oesophageal motility, then better to do tupe fundoplication. And if you see the lower oesophagus is short in the intra abdominal oesophagus is short, then you should do colis gastroplasty. Do you know how much oesophagus is intra abdominal? Yes, 4 centimeter is correct, normally 3 to 5 centimeter, 4 is also ok, that is fine. So, and how much you need for fundoplication? 5 centimeter. 5. So, if it is already a 5 centimeter fundoplication, like this is that much that is oesophagus, that much oesophagus is there, then you need to do the less mediational mobilization, is not it? And you can little bit mobilize, you can open it little bit, and then you can take a wrap, and you can take a wrap and you can suture it. This is very good, but sometime what happens? that uh, you have very short oesophagus and in those situation you cannot do the mobilization from the mediastinum that much. In some of the patients we have short oesophagus only 1 centimeter comes like that and this is the stomach. Now, the problem is entire 5 centimeter you cannot mobilize from the oesophagus mediastinum. In those situation you can do colis gastroplasty. What is done? Endo GI linear stapler will be fired like that. This is the endo GI linear stapler you will fire, 
and what it will do it will do the two row of a staple and it will cut in between and then you will get a neo oesophagus like oesophagus get elongated is not it without mobilization and then you can take a wrap. So, this is also one of the surgery which is recommended in the patient who has the short oesophagus or hypotonic lower oesophagus linked together with and substitute of college gastroplasty is thoracic approach that is called as Belsen-Nissen approach. So, this is chart will help you to find out that whom to operate and which surgery should be performed. This is the task analysis that is preparation of the patient, creation of new epitelium, diagnostic laparoscopy, mobilization of the oesophagus, mobilization of the fundus, then fundus pull, insertion, fixation and finally, removal diagnostic laparoscopy. Patient should be on the table, ideally you should do performing in between the leg and patient should be 15 degree head up and operating table should be 15 degree head up, you will stand in between one assistant left, one assistant right and camera person anesthetist will be usual position. 10 millimeter port you have to put in the umbilicus, 5 centimeter above the umbilicus and then one right hypochondrium, one left hypochondrium, one mid axillary line and one other side. So, basically this is the port position. You can use Nathasen's liver retractor, Nathasen's liver retractor, this is Nathasen's liver retractor. Nathasen's liver retractor already I have shown you before. Nathasen's liver retractor are of two type, one is handheld, other is table held. If you put net uh, Hassan's Hassan liver retractor, then uh, uh, it is very popular and uh, I have already shown you in the lab, but I am just showing the picture so that you can easily uh, locate it and uh, you can put it in the OT table uh, fix it OT table itself and it will do this is the net Hassan's liver retractor this is a very bad you know search engine, I, I hate this, some of the bad search engine is coming. So, Google is required. A spelling it will correct, this is an assassin, can you see that? Here you know, fix the table and it will go and it will become like a it is it is coming in two type one is hand held other is table held and it will go to the epigastric port and you do not have to ask any assistant to hold it and it can retract. So, any of the upper abdominal surgery like sleeve gastrectomy, gastric bypass and all this is table held and this is the Nathasen's liver retractor which you can apply. If you do not have then you can ask your assistant and you can hold yourself and then you will stand in between the leg one assistant on the left other assistant on the right and this is the way how you operate. So, it is coaxial alignment has to be maintained, one monitor should be on the left side, other monitor should be on the right side and then this is the how you will make the diagram for the port position. You have to actually calculate from G phi sternum and this is one right hypochondrium, other left hypochondrium and then one epigastric for Nathasen's liver retractor and one for stomach retractor and one for your right hand working instrument and therefore, left hand working instrument. So, generally 4 or 5 ports are required to perform fundoplication surgery and you can perform it this way. After that you have to make a mobilization, you need a sling also because when you are doing posterior mobilization without sling it will be difficult. This is left crust, this is right crust and then here is the mobilized posterior mobilization of the oesophagus and then you will take a fundus pull, you will pull the fundus all around and then you will start doing the suturing. So, we will see the surgery how to do, this patient has a small hatter's hernia and uh, this is the stomach, this is the liver, this is the Nathasen's liver retractor, a small very a small hatter's hernia and this is the diaphragm. Now, what you do, first thing what you should open either the angle of his or pars flaccida, this is pars flaccida. Pars flaccida is a very typical area. This pars flaccida is basically uh, completely this uh, transparent, and pars flaccida is the only membranous part of the peritoneum in our abdomen. Does not matter how much obese the patient is, fat is generally not covering it this area, and it is also important that caudate lobe of the liver is below that. 
and once you cut the pars placida, lesser sac will be opened. This is a portion of the peritoneum, posterior peritoneum, which separates the lesser sac from the greater sac. So, this is peritoneum, avascular. So, you will cut it. And here is the caudate lobe of the liver is below. So, this is the pars placida, which you will start this section, hold by the peritoneum, by the grasper and you will cut the pars placida. And it is done. And now, this is the liver below. This is the caudate lobe. And this all area you will keep on cutting it. This is harmonic. Now, this is the anterior peritoneum of the esophagus, which has to be mobilized first. So, starting from pars placida and coming up to the angle of his that is gastroesophageal junction. And while you are separating, always pull the peritoneum. This is a rule in laparoscopy everywhere. Wherever you have to cut the peritoneum, try to remain as near as possible to the peritoneum. Do not don't plug it. Now, this is the peritoneum over the right crust that you can hold it and you can slowly slowly mobilize it. So, this is basically a anterior mobilization of the esophagus. Now, this is the lateral mobilization and you can mobilize the esophagus from the crust and that is the right crust and slowly blunt dissection has to be performed. Here is the caudate lobe. Caudate lobe should be very carefully assessed because just below there is vena cava. So, you should not try to push it or not try to prick it anywhere. So, that is important. This is left lobe of the liver, here will be the spleen, and this is the anterior mobilization of the peritoneum. We should try to remain as near as possible to the peritoneum because fundoplication surgery. If you are too much aggressive, esophageal injury is one of the very important injury which occurs. Esophagus get injured, so that should must be taken care of. Here it is a spleen. Can you see that? So, this is a spleen. Here you have the left crust and this is the right crust. So, only peritoneum has to be stripped over the right and left crust and this is anterior mobilization is finished. A anterior vagus is embedded into the anterior surface of the esophagus. Most of the time you cannot see it separately. It will not be, but, the, but posterior vagus will be visible. Now, this is liver. This is caudate lobe of the liver. This is gastrohepatic ligament, which is not necessary to cut because hepatic branch of the vagus is going from this gastrohepatic ligament. This is the esophagus and this is the posterior vagus. If you see, can you see this? Here, this is posterior vagus. It will be more clear within few seconds. So, this is posterior vagus. Ideally, posterior vagus should remain with the esophagus. You should not strip it away from the esophagus because it gets blood supply here. Can you see now? Yeah. This is posterior vagus because it gets blood supply from the esophagus adventitious tissue. So, you should not try to strip it. Sometime accidentally you can take it in between the esophagus and the vagus, the fundus comes. So, that is here this is the posterior mobilization and just make a window, a small pocket, a small window you will make it, just cut the peritoneum and window. Do you know you will perform tomorrow exactly same way we have to do. 
and there is no difference actually and it is a beautiful surgery which we can um, do on Saturday. So, here this is a small window you have to make it and then you will pass a sling. Purpose of the sling is for posterior mobilization of the oesophagus lifting the oesophagus by this type of grasper is not a good technique because that can create the injury and sometime it can perforate and sometime it can tear. So, it is always better that you make a small button hole and then you pass a sling and that sling is many people do use many way some people they use rubber sling, some people they use cotton sling, some people they use the infant feeding tube, some people so that way you can uh, choose and you can decide which type of sling you want and after that you can hold it and then you will tie a knot here and you tighten it like this and then you can hold it and then you will pull it. So, that now there is no injury of the oesophagus and it will pull also good because it get trapped in between the oesophagus and stomach. So, it can pull your oesophagus inside the abdomen and that will help you to do the oesophageal mobilization because you do not need to go to the mediastinum. Your oesophagus yourself is coming into the abdomen. So, that way mobilization is easy and less risky. If you will not use it and sometime if you are poking your instrument more in the mediastinum, you can open the left side of mediastinal pleura and sometime pneumothorax happen and then you have to put a chest tube. So, it is good to have a good sling and then slowly you can do the further mobilization. So, that you can achieve a quite good floppy oesophagus, so that you can have a less traction and then once the portion of the oesophagus which is coming into the abdomen that will be wrapped by the stomach and that much portion which give the pressure over the reflux, so that reflux will not happen. Sometime posterior oesophageal artery it is started bleeding in those situations you have to be careful and calculate it, but better is not to go at that area. Now, this is again the anterior mobilization which will continue again by pulling the peritoneum and slowly blunt dissection and anterior mobilization especially if patient has a heart hernia then anterior tissue will be more you will get a more anterior mobilization because in heart hernia you have to take a peritoneum also out that is sac sac of the heart hernia is a peritoneum which is going into has to be taken out and now this is again the left side of the crust which is getting mobilized with the oesophagus sometime if the patient has a recurrent oesophagitis and severe GERD with the Los Angeles classification 4 and the long duration, then in those situations or sometimes starts a different type of oesophagitis together with the achalasia and in those situations, there will be so much severe uh, inflammation that you will get some fibrosis in this area and severe adhesion. Not only that, some of the people who are doing redo surgery already once the fundoplication was done, <coughs> but suture we had not tightened correctly the all the diaphragmatic opening has opened wrap is reversed in those situations also surgery is difficult. So, in those situations if you have fibrosis you may have to cut it with the harmony. So, this is also figures and these are some of the band which you can cut with the harmony. So, this is the posterior mobilization almost finished. Left side this is nicely mobilized. Now, you go to the <coughs> gastrohepatic ligament without damaging the vagus. Below, you can see the crowded lobe of the liver. <coughs> Here is the momentum over the right crust.
So, this is now the final part and now the next step of the mobilization this is the final part of the mobilization and now once you have done it now the next step is short gastrics. Short gastric has to cut out from the fundus this is little debatable topic some people they say it is not necessary to remove the short gastric some people they say that it is good to have removed it. So, it is plus minus it is optional, but in our practice generally we remove the short gastric we do not keep it because unnecessarily it is going to disturb you and it will give you little tight wrap and more uh, difficulty. So, you can hold the stomach with one grasper and omentum with the other grasper and then with the harmonic ligature bipolar whatever the energy sources you have you have to separate the upper omentum from the stomach. Stomach should be lifted like a bread, so that it can give you the easily like this your stomach has to be lifted. So, that it will not be touching over the omentum bursa, you will be away from splenic vessels and you will not damage the pancreas also. So, it should be completely lifted up and then slowly you can separate it. Eight to ten centimeter minimum mobilization is required. And you start from above in sleep gastrectomy, you are starting from below and then you are reaching up, but in the this uh, fundoplication, you have to start from above itself and then you need to go down. So, it is done little bit, still little is here. A spleen is behind, so very careful. These big vessels has to be taken care of. Some of the short gastrics are really big. Some many people they use like I sure here. So, it is done. Now, next step is crural approximation, where you have to close the crura. If you will not approximate the crura, what will happen? Yes, uh, all the wrap will go up, it will strangulate, and once it will strangulate, you are in trouble. So, always it is better that you should do. Now, question is how many sutures in the crura? 5 millimeter gap. So, it depends upon the hiatus hernia and you should close in such a way that in between the oesophagus and the remaining crura one 5 millimeter instrument should enter. You got my point? So, loser is better than the tighter because if you will tight it a lot there will be a big problem. Which suture is used generally permanent suture material ethy bond is used or dacron you can use. So, polyester that is polyester and it is important that it should not neither be loose nor be over tightened. So, the idea is that once you suture it and another when you are taking a bite accidentally your needle should not prick the vena cava, vena cava is here I will so, you thoracoscopy also on Saturday and I will demonstrate that how the vena cava looks like. Vena cava should must be taken care of because if you accidentally if the vena cava is pricked what you will do? Yes, air embolism will happen so immediate conversion is required. You should not try to coagulate or try to explode it or try to clip it anyway we cannot do that is not it. So, vascular surgeon help is required an immediate conversion is required. So, better is not to go there and then you have to suture it. 
if it is a big hatter's hernia then you may need to have a you may need to have a mesh yes but if it is just a simple surgery in those situation mesh is not required you can directly get it and uh, even uh, extracorporeal is not required just a simple intracorporeal will do because one or two knots are only required here you can see how much is this gap i think this gap is more than 5 mm if you think that it is more than a one more bite is required so that if the gap should be only 5 mm and it should not be more than 5 and right now the sling of the oesophagus is pulling it anterolaterally 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 and then this is the knot this is the last knot which will approximate it and it is converting now the 10 millimeter into 5 millimeter and that is ok now this is fine this is approximately 5 millimeter you can introduce it inside also now this is the time to tell your audience that you are a good surgeon and how to show that you are a good surgeon you will do the shoe shine shoe shine if you can shine your shoes that means you are good so this is shoe shine you hold left side and you do right side just like shoe shine means just like the uh, on the street how the shoe shiner they shine shine their shoe like this this is shoe shining over that the same way you will take the oesophagus and you will do the shoe shining and then that means it is a flop initiation and here you can hold it like that and this and this is the shoe signing and this is shoe signing and here it is a floppy so that there is no chances of dysphagia if it is hardly coming anyway and strangulating and tightly you are tying it that means you are a bad surgeon so it should be a floppy completely so that there should be absolutely no any excessive pressure now in the first bite here the stomach to stomach is taken so you can take one full thickness stomach then take another full thickness stomach <coughs> bring it out tie a knot or intracorporeal and then you suture it full thickness, full thickness. also figures has a stomach has one oblique layer of the muscle which generally does not allow it to perforate and even if you put a needle into the stomach and once you come out it seals its own in the colon it will not happen that is why we do not go in the right side of the palmer's point is not it because a stomach is a good organ to perforate. So, from after going from here you should stop your consultant going from the right side <laughs> inside the abdomen. Now, in the subsequent bite you should take a stomach oesophagus a stomach a stomach oesophagus a stomach. So, a stomach oesophagus a stomach means oesophagus will be sandwiched in between the two layer of a stomach and when you are taken in the oesophagus very careful because as we know oesophagus does not have serosa. So, if it is little bit you are confused you will enter into the mucosa and once it perforates it perforates very badly it creates a lot of problem and it heals very time, time taking problem is there. So, this is now it is done and now you will take. So, that 5 millimeter some of the people they take only 3 centimeter wrap, but majority they take 5 centimeter wrap. So, that it can be adequate uh, pressure over the oesophagus. So, only 4 or 5 stitches are done and surgery is finished. So, it is over. Now, the next technique which is used and which is very good today's life people are demanding I have performed only one surgery so far that is in the Apollo I did uh, when we have the bigger surgeries I used to operate in Apollo because of the better care here the ICU there. So, what I did uh, is the Lynx procedure. Lynx procedure is a very new procedure and that is increasing in the popularity. What is Lynx? This is a smaller wrap and it is done. Lynx is a beautiful procedure which can be performed without the complications of the fundoplication and without the aggressiveness of the dissection. It is an augmented magnetic device 
which you have to apply around the esophagus. Cost is approximate, it is expensive, it is American, it is in thousands of dollars and it is coming and then it will go in. So, it will it will expand once the patient is swallowing, but once patient has swollen then it does not allow the gastric content to come out. So, this is a links augmentation system it is like a bid it is like a bid inside there is a wire it is a bid like magnetic device. Patient has to carry one certificate probably when he go to the airport he will get you the x ray these are the problem that it will find out as a metal. But you do not have to do the esophageal mobilization. Links is not good if the patient has a big heart as hernia. Here, this is the pars placida, pars placida is cut. Anterior esophagus should not be completely mobilized because if you will completely mobilize it, what will happen? It will herniate into the chest because it is not like a wrap of the stomach, it is a very a small device and it will go. So, that is why links is done without mobilizing the esophagus. Even the anterior esophagus peritoneum is not mobilized, anterior esophagus peritoneum is intact and then you will go to the other area and slowly slowly it will be separated. And then yes, past the flaccida it will continue below the it will continue as a gastrohepatic ligament. So, it is not fully cut it has to be just open at the place where you are seeing liver that is all. Yes, yes just to esophagus just to hold the esophagus and this is the posterior window, but these peritoneums are also not mobilized Do you know why because these will act as a barrier for the links not to go to the chest. So, that is why this does not have to cut either posterior or anterior. Now, this is the caudate lobe, this is the right crust and here just a small peritoneum will be opened at the level of the attachment. So, that a instrument can be introduced from the right to left to bring a sling. The scissors, the right, yes, scissors has monopolar, but it is not activated right now, it is blunt. So, this is esophagus, and now the instrument is passed in a small window is made from the right to left side, and you will pass one articulating Maryland, which is used in a single incision laparoscopic surgery. Some people they use gold finger forcep also for this, that can articulate like a finger or you can use a grasper and then it is going from right to left. After that you can pass a sling, sling may be rubber sling, slip may be silicon, here this is a simple rubber sling is used that is of latex, latex is rubber actually cotton sling many people they use and then you can apply one knot over that because tying a knot with the latex is difficult in the cotton sling it is easy. So, you take a rudder's knot or melger's knot and you can apply over this. And it is this is rudder's endo loop, which is tightened. Now you will pass the one simulated bid that is a metal not magnetic 
and it is color coding yellow, green, blue, white coloring is given. The purpose is to calculate the number of the links beads you want to apply in this particular oesophagus, because surrounding soft tissue is not been removed, it is not a skeletonized oesophagus. So, it varies and here this is white and this will be this is the other color and you will just try to measure it that how much it looks like white is touching the blue, blue is touching the yellow what is there and then you will tell your nurse that white to white or white to yellow I want and it will be calculated that how many are there and then it will be weaved again bead is just like how the pist they used to take the name of the god with the beads same like it is and then now the it is colored and it is measured once it is measured you will remove it and then real links will be introduced no it should not be fully tight it should be just lying upon there in the sages guideline there is there is a guideline publication about the links if you will go through that literature it says that dysphagia in the links procedure is more in the initial few months but after that dysphagia decreases other problem is that this surgery should not be recommended for the every patients, but the patient who have pure GERD for them links can be considered as a good option. Although uh, still the long term data are not available that may be published after 5 to 10 years we never know that few complications may arise may be. Yes, initially dysphagia and vomiting is little little more in the links compared to fundoplication. So, now this is the original metal, uh, this is the magnet and then you will tie a knot and fix it that is all surgery is finished. So, basically if you will compare with the fundoplication surgery is comparatively easy, it is not going extensive dissection is not required and one of the people why in Americans they are more behind the links is one of the probably the best reason is you do not need any good suturing skill. Because in fundoplication, if you will not do the proper suturing work, that means you are making the patient life worse. Because you have opened everything, you could not approximate the cruda, you could not do that, then it is a bad option and patient has a lot of complications. So, good suturing skill is required for fundoplication, where the links it is done and now you do not have to cover anything, just drop the lever and come out. So, this is a you can just remove the this thing. So, this is a comparatively easy, but new procedure and uh, longer randomized trials few trials are all of course, there that is why it is already accepted and approved by the FDA approved by the FDA to use and this device is uh, being used regularly, but in India still we have not uh, started one case only we have performed and it was uh, still we are little reluctant to see this. Only reflex, only reflex, and it is done. Not for heart. So this is done. And now you will see that it is good. It is loose. It is not very tight. Just approximating, like a friendship band, like a wristwatch. How you put around the oesophagus, and it is over. Other procedure which is popular is called as TIF. TIF is transoral incisionless fundoplication. There is a device which is implanted over the endoscope and this endoscope will be introduced inside with that device and then you will do the internal plication. Like suppose this is the fundus here, then it will be plicated like that. So, it acts as a valve and it will give the pressure over the lower oesophageal sphincter. So, this device will become like a J, you will push it by the endoscope and then there is a needle which can prick and then it can pull it back. So, this way a stomach can be plicated inside. So, this is also a experimental new fundoplication that is totally endoscopic incision less a patient can be discharged same day and it works. 
jet line has to be established here. A small hiatus can be reduced. Retract the fundus down, and there is a automated staples which will clip and it will apply like that. So, all around the gutter curvature, it is getting plicated here, and this is applied, this is one applied here, another applied here. So, that way it can be performed in selected cases not every case is good for a tiff, but selected cases gastrointestinal endoscopic physicians they have started doing the tiff procedure. Long term data are still awaited and uh, this valve like sometimes get herniated into the oesophagus that also is one of the complication which has been noticed together with the perforation and the others are also there. So, this is basically also not as reputed as the Nissen fund application, it has its own complication. People get attracted for this type of new surgeries, but in the long term data are not there. Complications are bleeding, visual injury, wound infection, tight wrap, this is a this is a <coughs> cerebral palsy patient gone for fund application. In cerebral palsy, where they have had no controlled dribbling coming saliva from mouth, repeated reflux and chest infection, fundoplication is rewarding. Wound infection, tight wrap, intravenous abscess, hernia and failure of the plication. These are the most common complication. Advantage is reduced posterior operability, reduced health of surgery associated complications are less, less wound infection and less chances of adhesion. These are the most common advantages that we can see in any laparoscopy. This advantage is <coughs> surgery is very difficult <coughs> in the repeat cases. Loss of tactile feedback can create some time orthophagal perforation, potential for major complication in inexperienced hand, more operative time and more expensive. Although expense word is not a disadvantage, actually fund application expense wise is actually cheaper than the open because now hospital stay is less. So, it is it is a relative thing this is not absolute. So, thank you very much.